Hello everyone. Welcome back to Just Saying. And um, I hope you can hear me well. I'm using this um, lapel mic uh, today to catch the audio much better than the previous one. Uh, in my first uh, video, I never didn't use anything. So I um, hope the audio is better in this one. Anyway, as you saw, the weather is um, doing well here for a change in Miami, Florida. And um, it's been quite hot for the past uh, two weeks. Not much humid anymore, so just a dry spell. Um, but yeah, we are expecting some rains tomorrow, so let's see if that comes true. Um, I hope it stays like that for a couple of days or three days because otherwise um, it gets too hot again after the rains. I call it the after rain effect. <laughs> so yes. So um, why do I say we need to take charge as you read in the, uh, read the topic of this video? So what am I going to ramble about? Um, is the very much um, sought after issue right now the most talked about yes the COVID-19 and I know it's uh, getting boring to talk about it to hear about it to see the news about the same thing and many of you will switch off this video and go to something else I don't blame you for that um, but before I go on with this current situation that we are in I want to take you all back around 100 years, more than 100 years back, just a little bit shy, but um, more than 100 years back to 1918. And here are the pictures of Spanish influenza. So to begin with, why was it called Spanish influenza? I'm going to just uh, show you the pictures and the scenery. You don't have to see my, my face, it'll get boring after a while. So. Um, as long as the audio is fine and the content is good <laughs> so um, yeah the pictures are here and uh, why was it called Spanish influenza not because it originated in Spain nothing like that actually the first uh, um, observed uh, virus was in two three different countries here in the United States in New York Kansas then in um, Germany and also in United Kingdom. So these were the places where the virus was actually observed to have taken place, to have been spreading for a while. And um, that was the time when the World War I was happening. So um, obviously the newspapers and other media uh, didn't give out a true picture to keep the moral or the morale of soldiers high so that so as not to scare them away or their families um, at the same time the same newspaper and media showed Spain in a in a bad light saying that it had the the virus had the worst effect in Spain um, that was not at all true but since they told it that way, the name Spanish influenza was uh, ultimately hatched. So it was the media's doing during that time, the newspapers and all that stuff. Um, anyway, you saw in the pictures how many of the, how um, different cities across the world were affected. Everyone were wearing masks, fancy masks and going about looking very sassy <laughs> at the same time so um and brings me this brings me back to the current situation we have uh, as to why we are not able to curb the spread of the virus in this particular nation united states the virus originated in china wuhan as we all know it and now it's not there anymore italy where it caught on very quickly that is in europe apart from germany france uk 
all these countries are fine now. Here in the United States, we are left with three or four states, including Florida, where I'm in, uh, where we seem to have a hard time to curb this spread for some reason. Now, I forgot to mention one fact. During the Spanish influenza, the influenza, uh, we'll call it Spanish influenza just for the sake of it because it became famous by that name. It was, uh, the virus was called H1N1. And um, the virus affected one third of the population during that time, around 500 million, give or take a few. So 500 million cases, out of which the deaths were anywhere between 17 to 50 million deaths which was quite a big number and uh, that many deaths just because of the virus and now we have worldwide deaths because of COVID-19 um, the number of deaths here in the United States stands at around close to 140,000 140,000 just in this country and uh, pretty bad number so worldwide it is close to I think not too sure I should have seen that up but I think it is around 340 340,000 deaths worldwide but I'll update update that figure as the video progresses you will see it uh, see me putting figures up there and also I will uh, many people since I'm on this topic of uh, the number of cases and deaths many people I've come across who do not believe the news channels and they have the reasons I understand but um, we need to check up the sources different kind of sources where we get these number of cases and number of deaths from and um, I'm going to list a few sources they come in the form of maps and dashboards which you can easily relate to choose pick up pick your choo uh, choose your pick or whatever and look at the numbers every evening and see where we are going with this uh, one of these dashboards and maps include John Hopkins University a very noted name in the business of medicine and research and the other one is the World Health Organization uh, which has a dashboard so you can look their sites up and check the uh, number of cases and deaths if you do not believe MSNBC CNN and BBC or um, um, the weather channel who gives out co track COVID-19 as a link in their app so I've been doing that for some time now and um, I'm not saying that the facts are twisted in any of the apps or the news channels but the numbers can be obviously can be off by 50 or 100 I think but um, when you go to online on a university or um, on the website of university or the World Health Organization, they are liable to give out the true picture. I hope so. And um, then it brings me back to the topic as to why it is still spreading, especially in three, four states in the United States. Not all the states, but just the three, four states. And if you travel to New York from these three, four states, then you will have to be self-quarantined for 14 days. And that is... Um, a lot of expenditure in New York, yes, unless you have relatives who again will be evasive of uh, taking you over, giving you shelter because <laughs> why would they? If you come from one of the places who has the highest number of uh, or the rising number of cases. Anyway, um, uh, and I'm not just not just talking about like 500 to 1000 cases a day. We are talking about three to 5000 cases a day. And just three, four days ago, like maybe three days ago today is the 30th of March when I'm filming this uh, 30th of June uh, on the 27th or the 28th we had 9,000 close to 9,000 cases in one day in Florida and that is a very shameful number why is this happening I can only speak about the area that I live in and work part-time and I see people not wearing masks for some reason even now I know it's difficult to get used to the new norm it is a new norm but it has been going so since March so three months and um, I know there is reluctance 
built into it, into our system as to why we should be wearing masks. I know. Um, maybe lack of knowledge or a lack of uh, trust in the media or in the government is leading us to think that uh, whatever is happening around us is fake. That the number of cases are fake, number of deaths are fake and our frontline workers like the nurses and the doctors are creating this chaos out of nowhere. But uh, sadly that's not true. Sadly that's not true. The cases are there, the deaths are there and the only people working to help ourselves are the nurses and the doctors, believe it or not. And yes, again, they have families and they have to go back to their families, which unfortunately for them is not the case. They're still working day and night, mostly in these uh, states where the cases are high because they are forced to by us, by the people for um, not behaving. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, in the end, it all comes down to an individual behavior. A virus needs a body to attach to and a body to spread. So it comes down to us as to how we behave in society. If you want to be indoors, then you don't need to wear a mask. If you want to go in a car, in your own car, you don't need to wear a mask. But yes, if a third person sits in the car, and if you have been sneezing in the car, then that third person is going to get your microorganisms and who knows you have been carrying COVID or for how long. Add to that the asymptomatic nature of some people makes it even more dangerous and some people more vulnerable because you can be asymptomatic for all you know. But you may, be end, up, you may end up giving it to your family, elderly people, senior citizens, young kids, your dog, your cat, who are more vulnerable to such disease, if something else is going on for them. And so COVID-19 for them can be fatal. So think of it that way. If you're going out, please wear a mask. If you're going to interact with people, even though, even though you have tested for taking the test. So, it um, doesn't matter if you, I know the masks are costly, yeah. Many of the gas stations and uh, Walgreens uh, have hiked up the prices of masks, which is wrong to do so in such a calamity. Uh, on Amazon, the masks are still for 15 to 17 dollars. But yes, they will take, uh, it will take a while for you to receive one, say a month or two, easily. So, if you do order masks and gloves online on Amazon, do so in bulk, like three to four masks easily, uh, three to four boxes of masks. So, where am I going with all this? As to we need to take charge, comes down to our responsibility and um, what we do today will affect our tomorrow and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's why I put up the, um, the pictures of the Spanish influence of how people were behaving during those days. And even then, the cases were quite high. 500 million is a big number. Right now, worldwide, with COVID-19, the number is like um, 5 to 6 million people affected. And again, I will put up the right numbers for the worldwide um, cases and deaths. Um, uh, but yes, uh, this is all a little scary and even though people are undermining the potential of the virus, please uh, try to understand that the lives of the doctors, the lives of your family members depend on you when you're the sole worker or the sole caretaker of the family. When you go out, please um, wear a mask for their sake, even though it um, makes you feel idiotic or um, reluctant while doing so but it is just a sign of respect to others um, carry two masks two more masks in your bag so in case you sneeze in your own mask you can throw that away and wear a new one so um, just a little talk on responsibility and safe conduct in society that's that's all I had to say for today
and um, if you yeah please uh, kindly please uh, share this video subscribe um, not too much on the subscribe thing if you would like to I'll be glad but I will urge you to share this video please uh, so you can um, many others can see what I'm getting to um, this is just uh, a talk from a guy who sees how people behave in his own area being West Kendall and uh, and so Miami-Dade the county in Florida where I'm in which has the most number of cases of all other counties taken together so um, for some reason we are it, it all comes down to not the system but to the people which is us to stop the spread stop the spread of the virus all right guys I have spoken enough and um, I'll see you all in the next video stay safe stay strong be healthy and it's time to do the right thing take care see you